Welcome back to the Gridiron Expert. You know, every week a new AP Top 25 poll is released, and every week we get on here to break down that Top 25 poll and basically tell you what's wrong with it. But we said, you know, we're tired of doing that. We're tired of looking at a stupid poll that doesn't know what the heck they're doing, a biased poll at that. We said, you know what, we're going to come out here, we're going to bring you our own set of rankings. So today, guys, from now until the end of the year, every single week, instead of breaking down the AP poll, we're going to bring you our official GE Top 25 poll, the way we think the Top 25 team should be ranked heading into the next week of college football. So, back by popular demand, we have our whiteboard here with our Top 25 teams. But before we dive into our analysis and reasoning for each of these teams, we do want to say thank you so much for coming back here to the Gridiron Expert. Please, guys, continue to like, comment, subscribe, and share our videos. We are so close to 10,000 subscribers. So. Uh, we think we can have that before the game start on Saturday. So help us get to that goal, guys. And also make sure to check out everything down in the description below, including our expert picks over on our website, thegridironexpert.com. Guys, some of the best college football and NFL spread picks in the entire country. We went 58-8 and eight in week one against the money line. We hit over 61% of our spread picks for college football last week. Make sure to sign up for those today, guys, because you're going to walk away with money by the end of the season. We can guarantee you that we'll finish with a winning record. So make sure to go sign up for that today, guys. Again, the link for that down in the description below. Become a part of our GE Nation for this amazing and fun-filled college football season. So let's take a look at our polls here, guys. We won't spend too much time on it. We know we don't want to make these videos way too long. Uh, obviously, the AP poll didn't have too much to do with this, right? And we're basing this off of week one AP poll, nothing in week two. Uh, so we took we wanted to make sure it wasn't horribly, just crazily drastic. You know, not like someone like RJ Youngs or something like that. We wanted to make it realistic and correct as best we could. Uh, but you take a look at the teams, guys. Obviously, I think for us, the top four still remains undisputed. Uh, Alabama at one. Ohio State at two following their win over Notre Dame, who was fifth in the country last week, uh, beat them 21 to 10. Georgia annihilated Oregon 49 to three, and some could make the argument that Georgia should be two and Ohio State should be three. Uh, and I'm not ready to go there yet. Uh, I still think Ohio State's victory over a top five team uh, by double digits, by 11 points, to me is still more impressive than Oregon's vic uh, Georgia's victory over Oregon. Still insanely impressive. Nothing to take away from the Bulldogs, but I still like Ohio State above Georgia right now. Their win over a top five team better than an Oregon team that probably was a little overrated at 11th. So Alabama, Ohio State, Georgia, Clemson, and at four, defeating Georgia Tech. No worries there, no issues there. Um, we still believe they're the top four team in the country, a top four team in the country. After that, that's where some changes come in, right? We have Michigan in at number five. And again, we're not basing this off the AP poll. These are our rankings. We like Michigan up at number five. We had them as a top 10 team before the season started. They beat Colorado State 51-7 to last week. Nothing to brag about, but still a top 10 team, top five team in the country for us. More so than that of Notre Dame or Texas A&M. Uh, some will argue that Notre Dame should be below A&M. Maybe it should be lower in these rankings, period. If you base off the AP poll, the Fighting Irish were fifth. We only had them at six. Again, we're not basing it off the AP poll, but... In our eyes, to me, Notre Dame's still a top 10 team. You know, they led that game, led for the majority of the game, we should add. I mean, they were up, you know, 10 to 7, uh, well into the third quarter. Notre Dame didn't take the lead back until there were 17 seconds left in the third quarter and didn't put the game away to get up 21 to 10 until under five minutes left in the game. So Notre Dame, on the road at night, held their own against Ohio State. Uh, and, and I think that, that shows for something and speaks for something. The, the Fighting Irish are not overrated. They didn't, you know, uh, fail to cover the spread. That was 17 points. Very lofty for a top five matchup. To me, Notre Dame's defense was phenomenal. The offense, still the major area of concern. But when you're going up against an Ohio State team at night with a brand new quarterback making his first ever start, we knew there were going to be some offensive struggles. And I think those get better as the year goes on. So Notre Dame for us, still a top 10 team, no doubt about it. In at six, I like them better over Texas A&M, who, yes, beat Sam Houston State 31 to nothing, uh, but didn't look too good. Uh, prior to that uh, rain delay. Not saying they would have lost, but I'm still not crazy high on the Aggies. So Notre Dame above Texas A&M. I've always thought Baylor should have been ranked above Oklahoma. Uh, I've been dying on that hill, been saying that for, for months on end now. So we like the Bears over the Sooners, who had a fantastic debut uh, under Brent Venables, beating UTEP 45-13. to And then Utah here, rounding out the top 10. 
Uh, some will say, how? How can you take a Utah team that was an AP poll seventh and keep them in the top 10? Well, I'm here to tell you that I, I believe that Utah should have been ranked higher to start the season. I think Utah probably should have been a top four team to start the year. Uh, to, to start, they lost to Florida. We knew that was going to be a tough game. I don't think Utah deserves to fall out of the top 10. This is a Utah team that nearly beat Florida, got down to the six yard line, threw interception in the end zone as time expired, couldn't stop Anthony Richardson to save them lives, probably not going to make the playoffs because the Pac-12 is just done. Utah and Oregon, their best hopes, now they're gone. But Utah to me, from top to bottom, still a top 10 caliber team. One close loss at the Swamp, very tough place to play, to me doesn't justify dropping them out of the top 10 to say 15th, 16th like some people would want. Utah to me still is a top 10 team, more so above the likes of Oklahoma State, NC State, and the people that are above right now. So Utah rounds out our top 10. Coming over to the second column here, Oklahoma State. You know, they beat Central Michigan by 14. That game was a lot worse than the game really showed. They were up by like 30, 37 at one point. Uh, Chippewas never backed away, made it more respectable. Um, and the Cowboys defense still needs some work after the loss of Jim Knowles, but still to me a top 15 team in 11. NC State, that's one people will probably could be confused about, right? Here's the thing. For me, to start the year, NC State, I thought, should have been a top 10 team. So we actually, based on our thoughts, did drop NC State. I know they were 13th in the AP poll, so for the outsider, it looks like they moved up a spot after their one-point win over ECU. But really, in our heads, they dropped. I had NC State around 7th to start the year. So we dropped them about five spots uh, to 12th uh, after that narrow victory over the Pirates, a game they probably should not have won. Daffer misses the extra point, then he misses the game-winning field goal. The Wolfpack are very lucky to have survived Greenville. Uh, again, First game, first week, we're, it's, it's bound to happen. I think the Wolfpack are going to straighten things out and be the team that we expect them to be as the year goes on. Uh, but still, they deserve to fall. So, yes, it looks like they moved up a spot, but really they did not. They're still an elite team, guys, still loaded with talent. Give them the benefit of the doubt. They're in at 12th for us. 13th, Michigan State beat Western Michigan 35-13. to Nothing to brag about there. Very slow start. At one point, it was an eight-point game late in the third, early fourth. Uh, and then the Spartans pulled away. So nothing spectacular, but again, getting the benefit of the doubt. Pittsburgh, in at 14, beat West Virginia 38-31 to in the backyard brawl. First one in 11 years. Phenomenal game. Uh, the Panthers guys look good. I mean, defense does need some work for sure, but Keaton Slovis, phenomenal. Over 300 yards in his first start with the Panthers. I, I like this guy a lot. Week two will be very telling for Pittsburgh when they take on Tennessee. How good can that defense be? Can the offense hang it? Is at Pittsburgh. That's going to be the game that shows whether Pittsburgh really is worthy of this 14th spot and maybe you can start moving up or if we're going to bump them back down after a loss to a good Tennessee team. Arkansas in at 15th. I always thought the Razorbacks were a borderline top 15 team to begin the season anyways. The AP had them down at 19th. I thought that was too low. Razorbacks look good against Cincinnati. Still have some questions defensively, but K.J. Jefferson looks like he's in mid-season form. The running game looks like it's in mid-season form. The crowd played a major role in that victory over uh, a top 25 Cincinnati team that made the playoff last year. Arkansas, to me, is a top 15 team. This is a team that very well could be 4-0 when they face off against Alabama in October. We don't want to get too far ahead of ourselves, but the Razorbacks are looking very, very good and, and to me are worthy of that top 15 spot. Ahead of Miami, they beat Bethune-Cookman 70-13. Nothing to worry about there. Uh, I, I thought they were a little high to start the year based on the AP. Uh, put them in the top 25. I think Mario Cristobal and Tyler uh, Van Dyke are going to be a great duo. It'll be very dangerous, but uh, they shouldn't be in the top 15 yet. 16th for the Hurricanes, 17th for Wisconsin, who beat Illinois State 38 to nothing. Nothing to brag about there. USC, you know what? Let's, let's throw them in the top 25. Let's see how they do against Stanford, who they've struggled with from time to time. Lost to them last year. You know, I, I, didn't, I didn't like them in the top 25 to begin with uh, from the AP poll. As you can see, we don't have them where the AP poll would rank them. They had them at 14th. Uh, you know, based on where the new poll could be, they could be 13th or 12th even going into week two. We think that's way too high. Top 20 is about right for USC, whose defense looks solid, uh, surprisingly, against Rice. Again, it was just Rice. Defense looks solid. The offense will be great. Give them a top 20 spot. We'll see if they earn that as the weeks go on. Ole Miss and Kentucky at 19th and 20th. Uh, Ole Miss beating Troy 28-10. Kentucky overcoming a slow start to beat Miami, Ohio 37-13. Uh, still like Ole Miss above Kentucky. You know, some people would be like, uh, you know, when they're it's borderline ranking like that, they'd be like, oh, Ole Miss would win that game or Kentucky would win that game. Right now, if I was picking, I might be leaning towards Ole Miss right now. Uh, but obviously, they do play later this year, so we'll be breaking that down uh, here in a few weeks. But Ole Miss at 19, 
uh, Kentucky at 20th. Over here, these last five guys, BYU in at 21st. Uh, I love the Cougars, guys. This team is dangerous. Very, very good. I thought it was wrong. They were ranked 25th, borderline top 25. This was a uh, elite, uh, solid top 25 team in my eyes, and we had them well into it now at 21st. Uh, couldn't put them in the top 20 yet. Very well could earn that spot after this week, though, if they can beat Baylor, who we have as a top 10 team. They can beat Baylor and Provo in week two. But the Cougars look good against South Florida uh, and deserve to be well above 25 and at 21. Wake Forest in at 22, beat VMI 44 to 10 without Sam Hartman. Interesting test coming up against Vanderbilt in week two. That'll be a fun one. Uh, Oregon to 23rd, guys. So they had 11th in the AP poll. We dropped them all the way down to 23. Uh, still a top 25 team. Not many teams could beat Georgia. Not many teams can hang with Georgia. We know that, so you can't be too hard on them. But you lost by 46. Uh, that's bad. That's really bad. For a top 12 team to lose by 46 points, that's embarrassing. So Oregon just barely staying in the top 25 in our eyes, guys. They'll stay in there, hopefully, for week two. In week three, they take on BYU, and if they lose that, they're out. They're out of the top 25, 100%. So the Ducks, you know, give them the benefit of the doubt. It was week one, new coach, new system, reigning national champions. Let's see how they settle into things going forward, but right now, barely hanging on to that top 25 spot after that 46-point loss. Uh, and then finally, guys, two newcomers, technically, if you're basing it off the AP poll, Tennessee in at 24. This offense is amazing. Hendon Hooker and Josh Heupel, this offense is unreal. And I'm really, really excited to see what happens in week two when they take on Pittsburgh. We'll have a video out on that here in a few days predicting that Tennessee-Pittsburgh game. But the Volunteers should have been a top 25 team to start the year. They definitely are now in at 24 and can continue to move up if they get that win. And in Florida, we do have in at 25. Some will say, how? How can you put Florida in at 25th? Well, they just beat a top 10 team. They just beat a top 10 team in Utah in their head coach's debut. That's extremely impressive. They rushed for over 200 yards against that stingy Utah defense. That's extremely impressive. And to me, the two teams we have on the outside looking in right now at 26 and 27, it's Penn State and Texas, 26 and 27. And I believe Florida deserves that spot at 25 over those two teams. Yes, Penn State got a good win over Purdue on the road, but Florida's win over a top 10 team is more impressive than any win that anyone on the outside looking in got in week one, without a doubt. The most impressive victory for a team on the outside looking in, Florida got it. They deserve to be a top 25 team. They host Kentucky in week two, which means the winner very well could stay in the top 25. The loser for us could fall out, so it remains to be seen, but a fun one in the swamp on Saturday night. So guys, there you have it. This is a new thing we're doing here. Every single week, we will have our official GE Top 25. And this is the baseline, right? Take these rankings. You know, depending on what happens in week two, week three, the rankings will shift through this. So, you know, example, obviously, if Florida beats Kentucky, Florida's going to move up in our rankings. Kentucky's going to fall solely based on these rankings. You can come back to these for reference. You can debate. We want to hear your comments, guys. You know, we, we bash the AP poll every single week. Go ahead and bash our rankings. We want some discussion about our top 25 here, the top 25 that we believe is correct, the way it should be, and the top 25 we'll be bringing you every single week at the conclusion of each college football Saturday. So guys, as always, thank you so much for watching us here at the Gridiron Expert on YouTube. Make sure to continue to like, comment, subscribe, share our videos, and of course, Check out everything down in the description below. Again, some of the best college football and NFL spread picks in the entire country over on thegridironexpert.com. Make sure to sign up for those today, guys. Hitting over 60% of our bets so far this season. You do not want to miss out on that. So sign up for that today. Link in the description. Become a part of our GE Nation. And once again, guys, as always, thank you so much for watching. And we'll see you next time right here on the Gridiron Expert. Expert.